Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I am here today at the Rock Island Auction Company. I'm taking a look at some of the guns that they are selling in their upcoming uh, February of 2016 regional auction. And I have a very cool one here today to take a look at. We've looked at a number of German last ditch World War II firearms, and this is another of them. This is an MP3008, which was also known as the Gerrit Neumünster. Um, a lot of these late war German projects were named after cities, uh, two in particular that are relevant to this story. Now this is basically a simplified German copy of the British Sten gun. Uh, the Sten itself was pretty simple to begin with, but the Germans managed to simplify it even further. So um, from the records we know that Heinrich Himmler was actually interested or aware of the Sten gun um, taking an, a note of it and interest in it as early as 1942. Um, the British actually dropped a fair number of Sten guns into Europe for resistance groups and the Germans captured a lot of those. That's kind of a, a given when you're dropping supplies behind enemy lines that the enemy will capture a lot of them. Well, um, the Germans actually captured a, a substantial number of Sten guns and by 1943 they were actually sending captured Sten guns to various units. Um, not typically frontline combat units, but things like anti-partisan groups um, operating behind the lines. Now the first German production of Sten guns occurred in the autumn of 1944. Things were getting, getting kind of desperate for Germany and uh, the, the German government contracted with the Mauser company to make 10,000 copies of the Sten gun. Basically just straight copies. Uh, horizontal magwell, barrel shroud, all of that stuff. Um, those were, they were made by Mauser. It only took them about six weeks to do in November and December of 1944. And those are actually recognizable because among other things the magazine well is a single piece of metal that was wrapped around a mandrel and then uh, welded into a tube. Where the British used a, a, a seamless tube uh, for the magazine well. So there are some ways to tell those apart. At the same time that Mauser was manufacturing this order of 10,000, and by the way the the exact Sten copy was called the Gerrit or Gerrit Potsdam. Um, at the same time that Mauser was manufacturing those, they were also looking into simplifying the design. And one of Mauser's uh, R&D engineers, a guy named Ludwig Vorgrimmler, who you may recognize from uh, his work on delay, roller delayed blowback, which eventually led to the HK91 series of rifles. Well, Ludwig Vorgrimmler was the engineer who was tasked with simplifying the Sten gun. And so Vorgrimmler made two significant, two major changes to the design. The first one is that he made the magazine vertical instead of horizontal. That doesn't change the mechanics of the gun all that much. It's kind of a matter of personal preference. Obviously German troops were used to the MP40 vertical magazine well. This may have been a little bit better for uh, friendly fire identification and prevention um, and just more in line with what German troops were used to. Uh, he also welded the magazine well straight onto the receiver tube, which was different than how the stems were made. The other major simplification he made was to completely get rid of the barrel shroud. Deemed it unnecessary. Um, with a, a vertical magazine well that you can use as a front grip, you don't really need a barrel shroud out here. And if you're trying to manufacture the guns as quickly and as cheaply as possible, that's an easy thing to get rid of. So, there were a couple of very minor modifications to the trigger group just to make things less expensive to manufacture. but that's it. The magwell and the barrel shroud are the main items. Now between those two and getting this thing tooled up at Mauser, they were able to get the, the net production time for one of these guns down to a single man hour of labor um, in total. Which is really a pretty significant, that's a very quick, very cheap, very simple gun to manufacture. So just as Mauser was starting to make uh, Garrett Potsdam uh, stand copies in November of 1944, the, the German government ordered, placed its first order for the Gerrit Neumünster, this guy, uh, and they wanted a million of them, which was only slightly ludicrously optimistic. There was no way Mauser was going to be able to manufacture in anything like that kind of quantity at the very end of 1944. It, it, it was ludicrous. Um, but they made an attempt, um, and like many of the Volkssturm projects at the end of World War II, manufacture of these guns was divided up uh, amongst all sorts of small industrial shops that could handle individual tasks. So I don't know the exact details, but you would have, for example, 
one small shop making stocks. You could have a shop making receiver tubes or bolts or other components of the gun. And then they would typically, those parts would be brought together at an assembly center and uh, built into complete guns, either by a major company like Mauser or by yet another mid-level of subcontractor. So because of the chaos in Germany, as these were actually being manufactured by, at this point we're talking like early 1945, um, there is very little hard evidence of where these guns were actually manufactured. We know not more than a few thousand of them ended up actually getting produced, um, and some of them have some of them have no markings at all. Some of them have uh, production code markings that are recognizable as being from various German production plants, and some of them have three-letter identification codes that have remained a mystery. The records were destroyed at the end of the war, and there's just no way of knowing what shop a specific code refers to. This gun is an example of that. Um, this is marked TJK here on the magazine well, which is a recognized maker's mark, uh, but nobody knows who exactly that refers to. Probably some small ad hoc shop that was able, you know, had a few machine tools and was able to produce some of the major components here. They might have just been making magazine wells or they might have actually been assembling guns. We just don't know. So, uh, the one other item that we do see stamped on here is a large letter H, which stands for HEER, H-E-E-R, which is, uh, signifies that this went to the German army, which is a little bit unusual. A lot of these sorts of guns typically would go to the Volkssturm, which was an arm of the Nazi party and not the formal German military. Um, but this appears to have actually been issued out to the Wehrmacht. A couple things I want to point out here. Um, for one thing, our selector markings are different on the German version. We have a D on this side, which is for Dauerfuhr, or uh, multiple firing, and an E on this side for Einfuhr, which is single shot. So uh, like the stem, this could be switched between single shot and full auto, uh, but the markings refer to German words instead of English ones. Also, also the magazine release is slightly different on these guns than they were on original Sten guns. So this is pinned in location right here at the bottom of the magazine well, and it actually rotates around that pin, this direction. So there is a coil spring here, and this end is actually not attached to the mag well at all. Um, the spring in this one is pretty much given up the ghost. But there is a notch that comes through the magazine well here, which holds onto the magazine and a spring here, and the idea was that spring is pulling this piece this, this, this direction. So it's pulling it like that, which holds the magazine in place. When you push it in, the magazine, uh, the catch here, comes out and releases the mag. These did use MP40 magazines. Well, despite the, the small production numbers relative to everything else, these did actually see service at the end of the war. There is some documentation of them being used in combat. Uh, probably not for very long. Uh, this would probably be a pretty good incentive to go find the Americans and surrender to them before the Russians overrun your position. So, uh, this particular example, if you are interested in having it, is of course coming up for sale here at Rock Island. It is registered as a DWAT. The barrel has been plugged, um, and in addition to that, the firing pin has been ground off of the bolt. So it does. It's it's not a firing gun. It could be legally reactivated if you wanted to put in the work for that. But uh, I think as it is, it's a pretty interesting, pretty good example of last ditch German firearms manufacture. So if you check the link in the description text below, you will find Rock Island's catalog page on this weapon and. Uh, can take a look at their description, their pictures, and place a bit right there online if you're interested in it. Thanks for watching.